Hey, what's going on guys? This is Chris. Um, I wanted to cover a question that I get asked quite often and that is what volume should somebody train at and what type of frequency should they use in training specific body parts? Basically people ask me whether or not I advocate total body training or bro splits. My answer to this is going to differentiate from a lot of different people and that I'm not going to give you an overarching answer. Uh, my philosophy as a trainer is that each and every person has a different need as far as their training programs go. And when uh, we look at people and we just give overarching advice saying that you should follow this specific program or you should follow that specific program, it's really not helping anybody out. So what I want to do is give you kind of a categorization. Um, these are ideal type categories, meaning that you might not fit exactly into one of them, but they should give you a general guideline as to what I would recommend for your training frequency and volume. Of course, your own experience trumps, trumps everything, and you may find something that works for you that I don't recommend here. My advice is, of course, as always, to experiment and find out what works for you. Um, so let me go through this. The, the biggest rule I have when I'm putting together a program is this. One, the goal determines the intensity of the workout. And two, the intensity of the workout determines the need for training frequency and the need for volume. So we'll get into this uh, with the different categories. The first category I have is uh, an obese client and now what I'm talking about here is generally a man who has over 25% body fat or a woman who is over 35 to 37% body fat. These are people who really need to lose weight um, because of a medical reason and they um, have issues as far as insulin sensitivity goes. Sorry, somebody's home. As far as insulin sensitivity goes, and they're basically trying to normalize their bodies. Uh, and I call this the normalization category. It's called body normalization. Um, and so with these types of clients, we're go going to be operating at a very low intensity because generally they can't handle higher intensity workouts. They're not gonna be lifting very, very heavy weights. Um, and uh, we're going to need much more frequency than we would with somebody who is at a nor more normal body fat percentage. The reason here is because, again, we're trying to normalize their insulin sensitivity and we're trying to get them um, to move around as much as possible, to bring down their blood sugar, uh, and to increase their overall activity level. So generally what I recommend for these types of clients who are severely obese is uh, to be training um, using full body workouts and to be training as often as possible. Uh, the more I could get this type of client into the gym to train, the better off they are. And again, they're not killing themselves in the gym, they're not tearing down muscles, but um, we are trying to uh, stimulate those muscles as much as possible so that those muscles get better at responding to insulin uh, and accepting uh, nutrients uh, so that they're not being stored as fat. In addition to that, I try to get these clients to walk as much as possible, um, to walk every day, uh, and to just generally increase their overall movement. Two, uh, we also have types of clients who are called, what I call, body recomposition clients. Now, for those of you out there who are trying to bulk or cut, I actually put both types of clients into this category, and that's because I don't believe in bulking or cutting. When somebody is at uh, 15 to 20% body fat and they're trying to get to a lower body fat percentage like 10% or lower, the basic problem is to increase muscle mass while reducing fat mass. And the way we do that is again to increase insulin sensitivity, but also to stimulate muscle growth because what we're trying to do is not necessarily make these clients lose weight, we're trying to increase the ratio of muscle mass to fat mass, and I've talked about this in other videos. For these types of clients, uh, they're gonna be operating at a much higher intensity than the clients uh, who are obese, and my general recommendation is to stimulate each body part at least twice a week. Now notice I said stimulate and I didn't say directly train. Um, 
what I mean by that is this. You may train your chest directly once a week, but your chest is also going to get stimulated every time you train shoulders because of the nature of a shoulder press. Uh, it's going to get stimulated when you're training squats or doing deadlifts. Um, and generally, you'll stimulate most of your muscles by doing total body compound movements. Um, so I don't recommend directly training each body part twice a week. I only recommend training each body part once a week because the intensity, the increased intensity of the workout would pretty much take a toll on the central nervous system. As far as volume goes, um, for people who are in this category, the goal is to get blood to flow to the muscles as much as possible. So while on the compound movements, I don't really recommend going higher than three to five repetitions because we're practicing strength with the compound movements. With assistance exercises, we're going as high as 15 repetitions for five sets. Uh, and then the next category we come to are the strength categories, people looking to increase their strength. And I separate this category into two subcategories. The first category are flat out beginners, you are noobs. Basically, the main focus for this category is to gain mastery of each technique, meaning before they're looking to add weight to their lifts, they need to make sure that they are performing the lifts properly above all else. Uh, and so what that means is that these guys need to be focusing on technique, not doing a whole lot of weight. They're gonna be at lower intensity, but I don't recommend uh, training each movement pattern more than once a week because I want a dedicated workout that is gonna get them to work on the technique for that movement pattern. Uh, there should be less assistance exercises in this category, but the assistance exercises should be um, basically catered to bringing up their technique in their lifts. So for instance, if your chest dips forward on a squat, we're gonna be focusing more on core. Um, if your knees come in on a squat, we're gonna be focusing more on your glute medius. And that should be determined by um, either analyzing yourself or having a qualified professional analyze yourself or videos of you doing your exercises. Um, the last and final category are the, um, the advanced strength people. And these guys are gonna be doing a lot, they're probably gonna be at the highest intensity of training. There's gonna be a lot of weight, a lot of volume. And so for these guys, I generally recommend just training each movement pattern once a week, um, probably not training more than um, three to four times per week because of the heavy toll uh, on their bodies with each workout. Uh, I wanna mention here that I'm specifically talking about natural lifters. Um, not that I have any, uh, anything against giving advice to enhanced lifters, but for all you enhanced lifters out there, you can contact me separately. Uh, I know that most people who watch this channel probably aren't using performance enhancing drugs. Um, so my second big rule when it comes to this is that um, deloads are also determined by the intensity. So, and you can check the blog out on this. I'll, uh, I'll put a link to the blog below. But um, if you are at a lower intensity, such as the obese clients or the beginning lifting clients, the, the beginner strength clients, you don't necessarily need a deload because your training intensity is going to be a lot lower. Uh, as far as the body recomp clients, I generally recommend a um, complete rest once every three months. Um, and that's a complete rest to, you know, not going into the gym, but, you know, keeping your activity level higher by walking or maybe doing yoga or stretching each day. And the reason why I recommend that infrequent of a rest or a deload is because the main goal here is to stimulate muscle fiber and get blood flowing through the muscle. Your training really shouldn't be killing your central nervous system at any point. So you can probably train more often without a deload. Um, finally, as far as the uh, advanced strength athletes, you really should be deloading probably one week a month um, as far as taking weeks just to work on your technique, pulling the weight down, uh, not necessarily doing higher repetitions, but really just refining your techniques on each of the lifts. Um, and then uh, my final rule is this, lifestyle trumps all. 
So if you are a really high, in, uh, really high stress ball, and you have very little time to yourself, you have very little time to eat, then you're probably not going to even be able to train as often as I recommend, and I recommend a lot less than other trainers do. But if you have the perfect life and you're able to get eight hours of sleep each night and you're able to sit around and eat perfectly all day long and get lots of rest, then you are probably going to be able to train more often than I recommend. So again, your life determines each and everything and everything should be customized to you and that trumps everything else that I've said. Sorry this is such a long video. Um, there's a lot of detail here and I really uh, recommend that you all go and read the blog that's attached to this video. Uh, I'll put the link in the description box below. Uh, and if you have any questions for me, you can always hit me up at gettingtheshredded at gmail.com.